This is the Weekly Set, an official podcast of thetotalscreen.com. I wish I was the monster you think I am. You have come here to beseech me. Madness can be a medicine for the modern world. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Set, the official podcast of the Total Screen. I am your host. My name is Tyson, and joining me today, as always, is my partner in crime here at the Total Screen, William Rowick. Hello. So today is February 1st, 2021, at least at the time of we, we are recording this, and we are going to be discussing WandaVision Season 1, Episode 4. Well, I guess Season 1's kind of redundant, because this is just, it's not like going to have another season, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> they're not no. planning on having in our season. They're, oh, these, they're listing it as a mini series. Yeah. So these Marvel shows, I think so far are just conceived as like one and done's. Like they're, they're doing so many of them, but they're, they're probably like, you know, we'll do this, this connects. Whatever, we're going to do something else. Uh, I think some announced. of them they might end up going yeah. to too. Like I think Mi- something like Ms. Marvel or She Hulk is likely to have another season. That's true. But anything that's like that that's featuring the characters that were already in the movies is kind of being looked at as a mini series rather than right. Yeah, because yeah, because because these you know these things are expensive. You know, like these actors are not cheap compared yeah. compared to like television actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're they're uh, um. They're treating it as that also just kind of what WandaVision is. Like it wouldn't really make sense for them to do a second season, you know? Right. Like for no. what it, act, what the series is actually like the structure and everything of it. it just kind of it, like the premise would be gone. They'd have to start over. So they, they might do like a new series that also features Wanda, but it probably won't be called WandaVision. You know, it would probably be called something completely different, like Scarlet Witch or something, you know? Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so we are talking WandaVision Season 1, Episode 4, titled We Interrupt This Program. I like that all of the titles for the WandaVision episodes are like kind of like common things you'd hear on TV, like now in color or taped before a live studio audience. And they fit, you know, because like the last one, now in color, it's literally when, you know, everything went into color. And this one fits. We, we interrupt this program because it kind of takes a sidestep away from the kind of sitcom structure that we've been used to for the last three episodes and focuses on some other characters. So this was really cool because we had like three major players in this episode and none of them are from the original episodes. Even like, even, even Wanda and Vision are kind of like minor characters in this episode. They're not even in this episode. Every, every, every clip Just that features. through a features, TV screen, yeah. <laughs> every clip that features them are clips from the previous episodes. Well, so I mean, like they showed like other, like additional parts. Oh, that that's out. true. Yeah, that's true. They did have, they did have like additional. A scene, so you're right. Yeah, like we got to see more of the confrontation between Wanda and uh, Geraldine, who we now know as Monica Rambeau. Who is the, uh, the daughter of, uh, um, Captain Marvel's friend from the Captain Marvel movie. Yes. Who we, uh, who we, we got to see as a little girl in the Captain Marvel movie. So now we have her obviously played by a different actress. It's like, wow, it's time sure has fl- <laughs> flown by, huh? That little okay. girl's all grown up. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. A diff- <laughs> different actress. Cause yeah. <laughs> But it's kind of, I, I, I like that we had like completely different characters taking the focus. Three characters in particular, all from different Marvel movies. Yes. So they were all kind yes. of like minor characters from Marvel movies. Well, Monica Rambeau was, she was in Captain Marvel as a minor character. Here she's played by a different actress. But then we also had Jimmy Woo from Ant-Man with yeah. Randall Cat- Park rep- reprising the role and, uh, uh Kat Dennings from Thor. Yeah. It's Darcy Lewis and Thor. Uh, from like the first, her role. from the first two Thor movies, and apparently not the next, not the last one, and not the next one. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, from the first two f- Thor films. I like her character. I don't think she necessarily has to be tied to Thor anymore. Like, right, I think right. that's that's a thing about the MCU. And like I've said it before, but the MCU is like a giant TV show that like yes. crosses different mediums and stuff. And it's like, so I like when they can like 
throw Monica Rambeau, Jimmy Woo, and Darcy Lewis together. Right. Yeah, that's pretty movies, fun. You know, like, and, and it fit. They fit. They fit together, you know? Right. So that's really cool. What did you think about uh, Monica Rambeau's story? Because that was kind of like the highlight. So, so we find, well, we found out at the beginning that she, uh, well, they're calling it blip, right? That's, yeah. that's the, that's the, that's the term which I think they introduced in this. No, they, I think they did that in Spider-Man Far From Home. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, so we, well, we found out for the first time that she apparently blipped. And so, and I love the beginning of the episode because it shows like it shows her coming back into existence, like after, after the end of end game. And it show it's not just her shows like she's in a hospital and it shows it's like pandemonium as all these people are like just reappearing. Yeah. It was a really cool visual effect too. Uh, it's the same one they used for before, but like seeing it in this context is just really cool. So, um, yeah, she kind of, she, she de blips. <laughs> into um a, a room we find out that she's she's looking for her mother she's like where's my mother she's supposed to be in this bed you know and we find out no actually you know her mom's dead because it's been over three years um since since the blip happened and um yeah like her mom was sick then had recovered and then got sick again and passed away before monica ended up coming back Interestingly enough, we find out that uh, somewhere either in that time, I think, or before that time, Monica, or not Monica, but Monica's mom ended up being one of the founding members of S.W.O.R.D. Yeah. And and kind of really established the, Which is the basis a, of that. A su- successor agency to S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, they're like the more space, like extraterrestrial threats kind yeah. of division or, or whatever, you know? And... So we see that, like, this was Monica's mom, like, created this based on her relationship with Captain Marvel and all of that. Every, everything that happened in the Captain Marvel movie, basically. So yeah, so, so that became the basis for, for Sword, which we'd been seeing, like, little Easter eggs for throughout, you know, the last couple episodes. And now we kind of know that. And we know that, uh, her mom ended up leaving, uh, director Hayward in charge to take, uh, power after she passed away. And so Monica Rambo comes back to Sword after she's de-blipped and, uh, you know, no longer has security clearance because it's been three years and, and now is, is put on an assignment that just, it's kind of weird the way they kind of like, you know, like, Oh, we're just going to send a Sword agent who's responsible responsible for extraterrestrial threats to check out a missing persons case related to the FBI. Yeah. (laughs) Like it ends up becoming something that makes more sense for that. But like the rationale of director Hayward for putting her there, like doesn't make any sense. Right. He says like, Oh, you're grounded because that's like the policy. That makes sense. But why would she be put on a missing persons case for the FBI? Right. And and that's how she reacts. Yeah. You know, like, that doesn't make any sense. Why are you doing this? Yeah. It's kind of putting some suspicion on, on director Hayward as a character. Right. That like, maybe there's something up with him, you know, but she, yeah, she ends up getting there. She meets uh Jimmy Woo. They, they discover that this town that there's like a sign for outside of it and everything doesn't actually exist. There's another kind of cool effect with like a, that kind of rainbow banding, like TV signal kind of thing, like acting as the barrier between dimensions or whatever. And she kind of, you know, testing it out, like putting her hand through it and stuff, kind of gets pulled in. And that's how she ends up, you know, playing the part of Geraldine in the last three episodes of the show. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. She got pulled in. And it's interesting, too, because it seems like... it. <laughs> It's inter- it's interesting too because it seems like anything pulled in to the town uh gets gets altered to to conform better with that universe. Yeah, we saw that with the drone and we finally found out who the beekeeper was too that like that creepy yeah. scene. Yeah, they the kind of decreepified a, the scene. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was it was a sword agent. Yeah. Uh, just trying to infiltrate the town uh going, you know, going underground. I like how hit the the cord that was attached to him turned into a jump rope. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the jump rope and his uh and his hazmat suit turned into like a beekeeper suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
as these cool little touches of that and and the conclusion we're given about kind of what's going on there which doesn't i don't think is the full conclusion but it's what we're kind of led to believe is the conclusion is that this is all wanda's doing right this is a world wanda created yeah and and that and that she she is there willingly and that she doesn't want to leave i think there's more to it than that yeah yeah there's got to be more to it than that yeah i mean there's a rumor but i don't want to say what it is because yeah, no, if don't it ends say up being the case then it would be spoiler let's, effect let's not talk about rumors yeah <laughs> this is this is a no rumor podcast <laughs> we, we have never discussed a rumor on this show before <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly don't 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 list don't don't start searching past podcasts for discussion of rumors i don't i don't want to say what the rumor <laughs> is because it could be a spoiler but it's like there's there's got to be something more to the picture because they wouldn't resolve that much of the plot this early you know it's only halfway through the season right yeah. right we still got like four more episodes to go so. yeah they, they need they need another couple twists along the way you know besides just you know getting through to wanda getting her out of there all those things that they have to do besides that they still need to throw in a few twists that through curve falls uh to move stuff but, around but one thing's for certain there there one thing's for certain it does seem that wanda is well aware that she is in a fictional reality yeah and, and she seems to be and she seems to and she seems to be accepting of that. And she seems to want to stay in that reality. Yeah, it, it's. I don't know if it that she's been aware the whole time, but she definitely is after her encounter with Geraldine. Yes, I think she might have kind of woken up to it in that scene, like because the way she was reacting was kind of strange. Like it was kind of like she was kind of confused and surprised, and then and then kind of snapped to well, the reality of her situation. Was like, oh, I need yeah. to retain you know retain this keep this up you're right and then from that point on she's been kind of like off you know right not quite as happy <laughs> in her uh in her own little world with that yeah, like, I, I think that that it's a cool diversion that we got, that we saw, like, the, the ominous figure that's been watching this as a sitcom. We find out that was, uh, probably Darcy, <laughs> who was invested in it as a sitcom. I love how she was watching it and she was, like, crying. And Jimmy's like, are you crying? And she's like, I'm invested. <laughs> <laughs> I love how they, they kind of played off on that. And there were other people too. They showed a few other shield agents or sword agents, I guess, that were watching the streams and were like, seemed to be really into it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which I just thought was kind of funny. They threw an interesting wrinkle in that not everything that we saw in, in the past episodes made it to the outside. And so that, that strikes me as like another reason why this can't all be Wanda. Because right. why, if Wanda was like putting that together, why would she bother hiding that? Stuff? So, 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 so they hijacked the broadcast. It's interesting. They, they hijacked the broadcast coming from the town. Mm -hmm. All right. And they managed to tune it, but. But it presents as a, it, it presents as a sitcom and, and, and the parts that we saw that deviate from that automatically get, ed, you know, as far as like the characters watching in the show, you know, like any, any, any stuff that deviates from, from that sit, being a sitcom, like automatically gets edited out. Yeah, like her where, her neighbor cutting herself and bleeding yeah. or the, you know, um the finding the helicopter was still in there, but like the 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 beekeeper scene kind of, you know, all that kind of stuff where she re rewound time when she said no. Like that kind of stuff was all gone. It's all been like edited out as they said. Right. Um which like again, that's that's the implication is that this can't be all Wanda cuz why would Wanda bother editing something for the outside? world right yeah you exactly. know like she, she might change time to you know get rid of you know that beekeeper guy from interrupting her thing like she did at the end of episode two but why would she edit that out from what other people see like that right doesn't... And, she, and she got she got rid of monica because she saw monica as an outsider who was threatening 
you know, threatening what she wanted to, what she had or wanted to keep with, uh, with that reality. Yeah. Like Wanda's like in a delusion. I think she was even, like I said, kind of lost in that delusion herself. And then right. she's like, even now, like realizing it's a delusion where like, you know, my guess, like I said, is I think that she, she probably came into this knowing what was going on, ended up kind of like becoming susceptible to her own delusion. And then now she's completely completely awoken from that but she's still living out the delusion anyways that's kind of like my timeline for wanda as far as like what i think's going on so she's i think she's awake now you know like because they had like the final scene where like um wanda and vision were sitting on the couch together and she just she had like an uneasy look on her face that she didn't have before you know she doesn't have that like blissfully ignorant like you know sitcom look on her face anymore yeah, it's really cool stuff to, to divert from, um, what's been going on, uh, so far in the series, like focusing on these other three characters and kind of showing kind of everything that's been happening kind of from an outside perspective. Yeah. And it was nice to, you know, like the sitcom stuff is cool, but it was nice to get an episode that pulled back and kind of gave us like a glimpse at what was going on, especially what was going on in the outside world. Mm -hmm. No, you know, we, we, so we saw like, uh, obviously in the previous episodes, we saw like somebody watching, like the episodes would end and it would pull back and show somebody watching WandaVision and like taking notes. And we know now that those are the, you know, those are sword agents, probably Cat Dennings. Yeah. You know? You know, like, uh, like at the end of those episodes now. Yeah, definitely. Like we, we have like a context for that now. We did get like one really kind of cool scene after, as I said, and this isn't necessarily the case. So this is my, my perception of it. After Wanda was kind of awoken to what, you know, made awake for what, for, to what happened or what's happening around her. She has a scene where vision comes home and she looks up at him and it's like dead vision. Yes. That was just another really creepy, like Lynchian kind of moment, you know? Yeah. That was very creepy. There's, <laughs> there's a question if, you know, if vision himself self is real or if it's that's part of the uh you know the make-believe yeah i mean there, there's so many different possibilities of what that could end up being i mean we know that that um that uh, uh wanda is going to be part of the next doctor strange movie which is literally titled multiverse of madness which opens up a shit ton of possibilities for what could be happening right exactly you know it's it's not like it just opens up one possible thing it opens up a whole bunch of possibilities what one 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 other we weird thing right is that apparently like uh, apparently like in the outside world uh they've also like erased like everybody's like everybody's like memories of that town or whatever because like because jimmy woo you know and monica rambo are talking to like these two like uh cops outside of the town and you can very clearly see like the welcome to you know sign in front of the town and the cops are plain face telling them that that town doesn't exist yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. know if that's their memory being erased or if the town literally doesn't exist and that sign is just somehow right outside of that. <laughs> well, well, the town is there. There, there's a sign well, there. You can clearly see homes. You can see a street going down, but it, anything that there's a barrier there and anything that enters it goes into, you know. Well, well, the thing is, is that town, is that town a, a creation though? Because I mean, the sign is on the outside of it, but that could still have been part of the the creation you know i th i think i think it's there because you know you know monica and jimmy clearly you know clearly acknowledge it but the cops standing in front of the sign won't acknowledge it no well they they said it doesn't exist they didn't like not acknowledge the sign they just said it didn't exist and then like they said i lived here my whole life this town doesn't exist they didn't say that the sign they didn't like well, acknowledge a that sign the sign that wasn't welcome there to this town yeah yeah but there's also yeah. a magical barrier you know <laughs> like i i it's, think it's, that it's, might it's, be part of the construct is what i'm saying all right i might right. be part of the construct so i don't know like it could be that the town was like wiped out of existence and and has become part of this like pocket dimension kind of thing. Or it could be that it was literally the whole thing as a construct, you know, and it never existed. But I don't know. We don't know that yet. Trying to think of, is there anything else to cover? There, there wasn't a lot 
in the episode. It was what was there was really interesting, but it's not like there's a ton to talk about, right? In regards to like what happened in there, we we mainly just had like a lot of chemistry between uh, Jimmy and Darcy. We had some these kind of like alternate take scenes we got to see of like you know the cut the the edited out footage or whatever of uh, Wanda and uh, uh, Monica uh, when when Wanda confronts her and sends her out of the town. So we. We're getting these little bits. We're, we're getting kind of an idea of, of, of uh, that Wanda is, is somehow tied to what's going on, that this isn't maybe completely being done to her. And like we said, like it seems like there's got to be more at play than just Wanda. So somebody is kind of manipulating something here, but I that think Wanda seems to be a part of it. Right. Yeah. Like Wanda's not like a victim here. Like she's somehow connected to the manipulation itself as well. It appears to be at least. Um, yeah, well, I'm looking forward to the next episode. I'm looking forward to learning more about what's going on for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm not sure if the next episode is kind of, kind of go back to the sitcom formula or if it's going to kind of do both. I think it's going to do both. I think, yeah, I think, I think, the, I think this episode because, broke the format because we're going to have to go back to the format when, when we switch focus back to Wanda and Vision, but there's going to be, you know, obviously stuff is going to happen that's going to kind of, you know, like, you know, break the format. But yeah. I think, yeah. I think the overall format's broken now. Like, I think, yeah. I think we're going to be seeing both sides of it now. Yeah. The I whole, think like, so. the whole, like, self contained sitcom episode kind of thing is over. Yeah. I think so. Um, and, and so we're still going to see that, you know, like, I just saw, like, a trailer for, like, the rest of the season and they showed some more sitcom uh, scenes. Yeah. So there's still going to be sitcom stuff. I, I didn't, I didn't watch that because I don't, I don't want to see anything about what's coming <laughs> up. Like, it, yeah. It, it, don't, don't tell me. All I'm saying is there's still sitcom scenes. So they're still, right. they're, they're still going to do some of that sitcom stuff. It's just a matter of, um, how much, you know? Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for WandaVision season one, episode four. We interrupt this program and, uh, we'll be back next week to talk about episode five of the season of WandaVision. Nice. So until then, here's what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, as I said, it is Monday, February 1st at the time we are recording. Today, the Investigation miniseries comes to HBO. On Wednesday, February 3rd, Firefly Lane, again, not related to the Fox Joss Whedon series at all, uh, comes to Netflix. On Thursday, February 4th, Impractical Jokers returns to True TV. On Sunday, February 7th, The Equalizer comes to CBS. Did you ever watch the old, like, Equalizer TV show? Like way no. back in the day? No. Were you, were you like genuinely aware of it? I was aware there was a show called The Equalizer. <laughs> I have like very vague memories of The Equalizer. Like I think my dad watched it and I have vague uh, memories of seeing like a okay. scene here or there. Kind I, of. I know like nothing about it. It's like a cop kind of thing. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I kind of figured that. I think it's but kind it's of Dirty a- Harry-esque if I remember. I don't, right. I don't know. Then on Monday, February 8th, Black Lightning returns on the CW. On Thursday, February 11th, Clarice uh, comes to CBS. This is uh, uh, speaking. <laughs> speaking of Clarice, I heard that. Uh, I I heard that Hannibal's uh, how how it's doing on Netflix. Uh, I think Mads Mikkelsen said uh, it, re- it renewed talks about a season four. Uh, don't give me hope. <laughs> yeah, don't give me hope. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, I desperately want Hannibal back and fuck Clarice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's all I have to say about that. I think we are gonna both of us we are gonna end up watching the first episode of Clarice just because we talked about doing that for our next podcast, not next oh, did, as a next did week, we? but oh, yeah, okay. we said we were gonna do like the first episode and we we're gonna talk about Oof. you know it versus Hannibal basically. <laughs> that'll be a fun discussion. <laughs> There'll be, there'll be interesting stuff to go over there, like, like what they kind of change and have to get rid of. Cause like I said, I don't think Hannibal's even in the Clarice show because right. I don't think they have the rights to that character. Right. Which is super weird. And like, I don't think they have the rights to Jack Crawford either. So it's like, okay. So pretty much you're just going to have like Clarice and Buffalo Bill, I guess. 
like the characters that were introduced in, in that book and Silence of the Lambs are the only ones they can use. So, okay. <laughs> and then lastly, on Sunday, February 14th, the Great North comes to Fox and Mama mate, Mama named me Sheriff comes to Adult Swim. So that's it. That's what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. As I said, next week, more WandaVision. Until then, you can follow me on Twitter. I am at Tyson Gifford. You can follow Will. He is at Voxel Hero. You can check out our Facebook page and our YouTube channel, as well as our site, thetotalscreen.com. And you can s- subscribe to the podcast through any major podcast client like iTunes or Pocket Cast. The entire backlog of our podcast is available on our YouTube channel. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Good night. Good night. If you would like to reach out to us and make a comment, send an email to contact at thetotalscreen.com. Stay tuned to The Total Screen for the very best in genre television.